I'm Roger Montgomery and welcome to this week's Video Insight. As you know, I've been bullish about small companies for 2024. In fact, I first advocated adding to small cap holdings back in November 22 and then again in May last year. That call has proven timely for investors with the Small Ordinaries Index up 5.45% year to date and up 21% since the low of October 30 last year. The story is almost similar overseas, with global small caps also doing reasonably well. The S&P 600 small cap index is up 23% since its October lows, with most of those gains made early, and the index up just a percent year to date. We know historically small cap equities outperform their large cap counterparts in the early stages of an economic recovery, when economic growth accelerates. According to Goldman Sachs Economics, and keep in mind economists get it wrong as often as they get it right, 2024 real US GDP growth is expected to come in at 2%. Bloomberg has consensus estimates for growth at 1.6%. Elsewhere, the world manufacturing cycle is staging a broad-based recovery, which often foreshadows the direction of the global economy. Global GDP activity is indeed gradually improving, which should also lead to consensus earnings upgrades. Think soft economic landing equals gentle takeoff for corporate profits. It sounds like the world economy is entering a disinflationary boom, and if so, that would be especially rewarding for investors in quality innovators, just as it has been in the past. For my purposes, what's important is not whether growth is 1.6% or 1.8% or 2%. That doesn't matter. What is important is that it's positive. As I've been emphasising frequently over the last 12 months or so, positive economic growth, even when anaemic, is supportive for innovative companies provided it's accompanied by disinflation. And remember, disinflation isn't deflation, not lower prices, but lower rates of inflation. Other analysts have a slightly different take on the picture. They say that when growth reaches 1 or 2% per annum, global small caps have, on average, outperformed large caps, provided interest rates are also falling. Now, according to Goldman's, after an extended pause in global interest rates, they believe we're now on the cusp of a rate-cutting cycle as inflationary pressures, for the most part, appear to be under control. So, after rates rose at an unprecedented rate for the current generation of investors, we now have a consensus that rate cuts are on the horizon. Small caps tend to beat large caps as rates begin falling, and remember, Interest rates act like gravity on asset valuations. As rates fall, the gravitational pull on valuations becomes lighter. Finally, falling interest rates also benefit equities by lowering the cost of capital and boosting their profitability. Who knows? We could have the perfect setup for small caps this year and next. If disinflation is accompanied by some interest rate cuts and positive economic growth, the equity prices of quality innovatives, innovatives rather, should go up. Of course, nothing is ever certain, but I'm backing small caps domestically through the Montgomery Small Companies Fund and globally through the Poland Capital Global Small and Mid Cap Fund. And don't forget, the recent reporting season proved corporate profits were much more resilient than many had feared. Now, prior to all of this rosiness, of course, small caps had a very tough 22 and a very tough most of 2023 relative to their large cap peers. Have a look at this chart. As you can see, as has often been experienced, smaller stocks being less liquid reflected investors' concerns more acutely. And the challenge for small caps in 22 and 23 was that interest rates were rising, leading to concerns about economic growth. The good news is that not only is the backdrop now much more supportive for small caps, but the previous conditions that drove concerns has meant smalls are the cheapest relative to bigs that they have been for many years. And for those who worry that economic growth might not remain positive, what we have is a valuation environment for small caps that potentially provides good downside protection. As you can see from this second chart, 
which is one year forward PE ratios for the US S&P 600 small cap index, the multiple of earnings investors are willing to pay for smaller companies has only been lower after the GFC, during the GFC, and after the tech wreck at the turn of the century. The small cap investment universe is one of the most exciting parts of the market in which to invest. You can gain exposure to sectors, industries and themes that simply aren't available in the large caps. Also worth keeping in mind is the small cap universe is always expanding and being refreshed. New companies emerge, there are IPOs, and all the merger and spin-off activity ensures there's always an opportunity around the corner for those willing to devote their time to the analysis. You could of course simply run out and buy stocks like Megaport, Macquarie Technology, Life360, LaVisa or Ordinate. They're all stocks loved by the Montgomery Small Companies Fund. But don't do that as you'll just be helping us. You'll push them up and that will reward us more than you. The other problem of course is you won't know when the manager has decided to change their mind and sell those stocks. And we might not revisit them here on the blog either and you won't know when we've changed our mind. But if you're convinced, as I am, that small caps are worth having in your portfolio and that now is the right time, instead of grinding away looking at each small cap stock and assessing its merits yourself, think about handing the reins over to a great small cap team and invest in their fund. That's what I've done. Speak to your advisor and ask them whether that's right for you. Thanks for joining us this week. I look forward to talking to you again next week. And in the meantime, please follow us on Facebook or X.